Hello and welcome to Meet the Boss TV. In this program, digital marketing tech is changing and why the click-through rate must die. Audience Science CEO Mike Parata recently said, we're on the cusp of a significant pivot in the ad tech sector where brands will take more control of their digital marketing technology investments in ROI. Sounds great and we know plenty who will welcome the news, but what is this pivot moment and how will it play out? To find out, I spoke with Audience Sciences Director of Research and Marketing Strategy, Michael Green. One of the biggest changes that we've seen is marketers really wanting to take back more control over their technology investments. Uh, we recently conducted a study with Forrester uh, to get a sense of what exactly is happening with marketers and technology today. And one of the interesting things we found is that while CMOs already spend about a quarter of their budget on technology, uh, much of that technology budget they don't even know that they spend. Um, it gets buried in media costs, it's hidden by middlemen, and what we're really seeing marketers do is say, one, I want more transparency, but also looking to take back more control as the technology gets more sophisticated, impacts other parts of the enterprise uh, in a more profound way. Digital marketing is sort of founded on this premise of, uh, of visibility, greater visibility into spend, um, tracking, making it more measurable. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think what we've found is that for so many marketers, that hasn't necessarily been the case today. You know, I challenge any marketer to go find where their ads are running online today and get a real true in-person screenshot of that. It's simply very hard to do compared to traditional media, television, or print, where it was very easy to verify that you got what you paid for. Uh, technology certainly is the solution today. The challenge is that so much of the technology has been wielded by middlemen instead of the advertisers themselves. And to that end, what it's really given is all these intermediaries, media sellers, various vendors in the space, all the power, and left marketers with less of an idea of how their money is actually being spent and less of an idea of whether they're actually getting what they thought they were. So how does a technology platform like Audience Science Gateway help CMOs reach the consumer? It's about the foundational effectiveness of the channel. I firmly believe that marketers are going to allocate their budgets to wherever is going to be most effective to them. Maybe not immediately, but certainly in the long term. I think when we look at digital today, it hasn't necessarily been the case. So what our technology allows them to do is change that scenario. They're able to find exactly the customers they want to target through the system, get all the data about their customers into a single place, analyze it, deduplicate that, get a real clear idea of who they want to target, and then in a seamless automated way, go out and begin to execute against those target audiences wherever they may be online. I, mean, I guess one of the things that is, uh, is driving this need for, for greater insight and transparency is um, the explosion in, in data at, uh, at the marketer's disposal. Um, it's a real resource challenge. So how do you help analyze all that data to, to enable a more targeted and effective interaction between organizations and their target customers? Absolutely. So it, it really comes down to having uh, both massive technology scale but as well as the strategic services on top of that. Uh, so Audience Science as a company has pro manages profiles on over 3.5 billion users uh, globally. Uh, that's simply you know, a significant percentage of the entire population, let alone the entire internet population. Uh, so what that allows advertisers to do is go in and on their own define exactly who those people are that they want to reach on their own terms. So let's say that you are a cosmetics company and you're really looking for a housewife in suburban France who uh, is of a certain income level and has three children. That's a very specific target that's native to your brand and probably defined only by your innate knowledge of that customer. With our system, you're not relying upon us or some other company to define who that audience is. You go into that platform and you build that audience yourself on your own terms based upon your own understanding of your customer. And then, of course, given that the technology is natively integrated with the ability to execute against those target audiences, to go out and buy media uh, across the entire internet against those target audiences, uh, it makes it a fairly seamless process from defining that audience to executing a campaign against that audience to getting the insights on exactly how that campaign performed. 
what kind of measurements and metrics are we looking at in terms of um, being able to measure those campaigns and, uh, and really uh, you know, see how your campaign is, is being executed on? Yeah, so I think one of the interesting things is when I look at digital marketing today, I, I, we typically find that measurement is a, probably the biggest challenge remaining out there. In fact, uh, in the UK, we recently conducted a survey, uh, reached out to over 300 different senior level marketers, and they agreed that measurement was the biggest challenge they were having. Uh, today, our approach is measurement agnostic. Um, we're a solution that, uh, because of the scale and the scope of our technology, can track basically any measure that the uh, that the advertiser so desires. I think the challenge is really about the marketer going and defining what are the really important key performance indicators that are going to be indicative of my business success. And if you look at a lot of the traditional metrics that marketers have focused on, uh, things like click-through rate. Uh, studies have shown, uh, Nielsen Comscore data over the past has shown, they've been very poor indicators, especially for brands that have offline sales channels. So, what it's really about is developing the knowledge over time about what's a good predictive indicator. And you know, the prerequisite for that is really, can I have a single place where I can track any single metric possible? Do I have that level of flexibility? Do I have all that data in one place so it's relatively easy to analyze? And then can I begin to build predictive models over time that show these online actions, say a user seeing an ad and then taking two or more page views or two or more important actions on my website are fairly indicative of that user later going to convert offline. I'd like to, uh, to return again to a, to a quotation um, from your CEO, Mike Peralta. Um, impression level decisioning and the ability to apply first party data are important factors, but transparency is our biggest differentiator. So what does this mean for pricing? The philosophy that we have is that marketers should know exactly what any single ad impression cost and what the other costs were involved with buying that impression. Uh, what a lot of marketers don't realize is that the act of getting in front of the customer's eyeballs is actually a relatively complicated one in the digital space today. A study by BCG earlier this year found that oftentimes marketers have over 20 different intermediaries sitting between them and ultimately reaching their digital customers. And what happens with that is the cost of reaching those customers gets obfuscated with every step in that supply chain. What we try to do as a company is one, simplify that supply chain, go from having 20 different intermediaries down to one point of contact for reaching that customer, and then to break apart and know exactly what each piece costs along the line. So the marketers know when I'm buying a piece of media, especially in an exchange traded auction, which is all the more common these days, I know I'm getting the lowest price possible and that any intermediary is not making a markup that's non-transparent to me on top of that. If I'm using data, whether it's my own or from a third party, I know that I have ownership of the data if it's my own data and not being charged for that. Or if it's third party data, I know I'm getting it at cost and that it's not some other party just marking up something that some other entity is sold, selling. So it's really about what every marketer should want know what things actually cost so you can understand what's working, what's worth it, and what's not, and then be able to get things at the lowest price possible. According to the IAB's Internet Advertising Report 2012, display-related advertising accounted for 12 billion, or 33% of total revenues during 2012. Um, of this, display banner ads accounted for 21%, um, or 7.7 billion. Um, but recent reports put click-through rates between 0.03 and 0.07%. Um, so will 2014 see the death of the banner or the death of click-through rates as measurement? Um, and how does your platform measure results? The click-through rate, I think, is something that certainly, if it's not going to die this year, should die a death uh, very, very, very soon. U ultimately, multiple research reports, uh, most notably an in-depth study by Nielsen a couple years ago, found that click-through rate simply has no correlation whatsoever to the business success, especially when engaged in offline sales of any particular advertiser. Uh, so, you know, ultimately I wonder why is an advertiser tracking something that has no relation to their success whatsoever. So what do you see as the, uh, the replacement for click-through rates in terms of uh, some of those measurement um, techniques? Moving forward, we expect a lot more advertisers to begin using uh, much more advanced attribution 
tools. Uh, there are many great statistically driven attribution models out there that use uh, complex algorithms that bring all the different elements of the campaign together and build a regression-based analysis on top of that. Certainly, I think for more direct response-driven advertisers, these are uh, not only appropriate, but almost essential, especially if you're paying out any media partners on something like a CPA, a cost per acquisition. Uh, you want to be really sure that you are paying for actually incremental revenue, people trying to drive success, and not just partners or media impressions that are you know, essentially there to make themselves look good and pretend like they're driving value, but in fact, in many cases, never even showed up in the screen of the user to begin with. For more brand-oriented advertisers, uh, the measurement conundrum is a bit more complicated. Uh, typically, you're looking at sales that happen offline, maybe even longer purchase cycles, and this requires similar types of statistical modeling, but many more different types of data to bring together uh, from many more disparate systems. So it's a much more long-term approach for these type of advertisers. What I think what we found is a best practice working with a lot of large brands globally at this point in time is y you have to start with a hypothesis, right? Um, you have to have something that you can test out into the marketplace. So think about things like uh, what are key leading indicators that indicate that a customer would be engaged? Uh, certain advertisers that we work with do things like multiple page views on their sites and certain key activities on their websites. And over time, begin to correlate that between what they see online with what they see happening uh, in the offline world. Uh, increasingly as well, there are a number of companies, uh, notably companies like Dunhumby, that are cer certainly starting to bridge the gap between the online and the offline data space, bringing things like uh, shopper marketing data for FMCG brands, into the online space so it can be targeted against and used for measurement as well.